I'm Lindsay Anson Park, and you're listening to Gospel Tangents. It's the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. I'm excited to have Lindsay Hanson Park on the show. She's the executive director of Sunstone and has been the one who has, has the slogan, More Than One Way to Mormon. So we're going to learn more about Lindsay and polygamy. She's kind of an expert. She has her own podcast and we'll ta- learn more about her podcast here uh, in this episode. So you don't want to miss our conversation. Check it out. Well, welcome to Gospel Tangents. I have a podcast superstar on today. What can I say? <laughs> and so I know that some people don't know your superstar status, but could you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Lindsay Anson Park, and I am the executive director of the Sunstone Education Foundation. Mm-hmm. And I also have a really popular Mormon podcast called Year of Polygamy. And I also do what's becoming a really popular new podcast, the Sunstone Mormon History podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and in fact, I got a I big got bump dogs. with uh, John Larson put me on and, and so thank you John that was awesome <laughs> yeah John's great at Sunset we have three podcasts going right now and so actually we have four podcasts four yeah wow. so well, why don't you tell us about it so we have um and I apologize <laughs> got these dogs all over me we have the Sunset Mormon History podcast which is the one that Brian Buchanan and I do and he's um an editor and works at Benchmark Books, and so he's just a Mormon history nerd like myself, and so we're doing the history of Mormonism from the very beginning. And then we have uh, the Sunstone Podca- Podcast with John Larson, and that caters to a more, I would say, post-Mormon crowd. John Larson previously did Mormon Expressions, which was an ex-Mormon podcast, and so we have a podcast for that, and then we have, and it's really great, uh, a lot of people love John Larson. He's in my opinion, like the best podcaster, Mormon podcaster that ever existed. So we're really lucky to have him. And then we have the Mormon, um, we have the Sunstone podcast, magazine podcast with Stephen Carter, our magazine editor, and that's where he takes the articles that people submit to Sunstone, and they make it in like an audible quality format. It's really great. And then we have the Firesides podcast, which is, uh, we have eight different um, hosts. They're all women or people that identify as women, and uh, they just do interviews on all kinds of topics in and around Mormonism, so it's very so broad. So are you neglecting Year of Polygamy? Because I have to tell you, in my ward, you know, I will I would tell people, oh, I've got this podcast, and nobody, I, I, one person sort of listens because I told them about it, but, but the, I've had more people say, oh, I listen to Year of Polygamy. Yeah, <laughs> no, Year of Polygamy, it's hard because I'm, I'm on like episode 174 right now or something. That's a lot of polygamy talk. And here's the thing. I could talk about it forever in perpetuity always because there's always so many stories. But I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of, I, I really, uh, my work has shifted. I was really interested in the history of polygamy and I still am. But the majority of the work that I do in and around that space is around activism and community building, and I work with a lot of fundamentalist groups and things like that, so. Yeah, well, and so, I, I hate to say this, but we're gonna be talking about polygamy today. That's great, no, I mean, I can, I can talk about it. I just think, I think I was putting out a weekly episode, uh, you know, that was a lot of historical research, and, and I loved it, and it was great, but, yeah, my work has, once I got, you know, I started this podcast and it blew up and got really popular. Uh, like I said, it's there's so much need and so much work that needs to be done in the communities whose stories I tell. And so it just feels irresponsible for me to go in, tell their story, and then leave them with the impact of my story. So I'm really invested in the communities um, whose stories that I help share. And so that takes up the majority of my time. Well, and you're an international TV star too. I know. Are you, I remember, I don't know how long it's been, but you posted a thing where there were these uh, Russian dialogue over a video yeah. of you talking about polygamy. Yeah, it's a wild world I live in. Like every little Mormon girl's dream is to grow up and be all over the news for polygamy. So <laughs> I think I'm killing it in that regard. No, I mean, it's weird. It's my life is weird now. It's so weird. And I always say, like, I don't even know if I could get another job because my resume is so weird. And I'm becoming, it's becoming now, I'm doing Mormon stuff all the time. Like, I'm not even normal. I can't have a normal conversation with people. Like, we'll just be at a dinner party with never Mormon people and always we end up talking about polygamy. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm weird. <laughs> I don't know how we got here. But yeah, yeah, so I've done a lot of press, a lot of news, a lot of documentaries. It's a fascinating topic that everyone's really interested in. Sorry. 
<laughs> so um, the funny thing is, I remember your interview with John Dillon, and um, you referred to yourself as the John Dillon of Mormon polygamy. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's so in the fundamentalist communities, there's I've been doing a lot of work to intersect them in the post-Mormon, progressive Mormon, um, and Mormon communities, because I think that we have a lot in common. We have more in common than we have different. And I've noticed that, too. I've talked to a fair number of polygamists. I'm nothing like you. Nobody nobody wants to admit that. It's such an uncomfortable thing to think that we're like something that we've been like taught to sort of not like for so long. But, um, yeah, I feel like I have brought them in and there's no resources there's not a lot of resources in their communities there there are becoming more and more and more because that's what i've been working on but you know when i had a sort of a faith crisis 15 years ago what we did was the john delins and john larson's and me and others like me we built resources for people like us and so now i'm trying to do that in in those communities because there's not i mean what do you do if you're a Mormon fundamentalist polygamist that try, that leaves the, their church or whatever? I, you know, one time I had, I met with this couple who they were in a mixed faith marriage, which means, you know, one of them has their faith intact and one is losing their faith and going in an opposite direction. And this is a very common thing that happens in the LDS community, right? So, you know, spouses go through this process all the time. And so we have a lot of resources. So I put a call out and I said, hey, I have this couple that needs help and they're feeling really isolated and lonely. By the way, they're polygamous. Uh, it's a, one of the sister wives is losing her faith. The husband tried to rescue her and he, and he lost his faith in doing that. And the other two sister wives were like, what the heck? And I, I just felt for them. They were in so much pain. And so I put this, this call out there and I had a lot of LDS people say, why do you want to normalize polygamy? Why are you trying to norm like they should just leave? And I thought, that's not fair. You don't get to ask people to leave their families because they leave their faith. Like just because we have this stigma on their family structure, they deserve resources and help just like anyone else. But there's such a stigma about being a polygamist that we just want to say, nope, they're a villain. We've figured out who they are and they're we don't want to deal with uncle. them. But yeah, exactly. So I'm really interested in sort of the intersections of where these communities need help. And that's, that's why I don't put out as many podcast episodes. I'm still putting out episodes for Year of Polygamy. It's just very slow. <laughs> so how long is your year? Because didn't you originally, the Year of Polygamy was supposed to last a year? And how long has it been going now? Yes, everybody thinks this is a really hilarious joke. Uh, it's, was, I was going to do a Year of Polygamy. And what people think, they're like, does that mean you practice it for a year? No. No. I was just going to do a hit, like, so I had the Feminist Mormon Housewives podcast, which is now defunct. We don't do that anymore, but. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I just thought for a year, I'm going to go down and study this topic and tell the history of polygamy, and it turned into, oh gosh, what is it, five, five years now? It's been five years? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Several years of polygamy. And you don't you don't just do polygamy. I mean, certainly that's the major topic. But because I know you've talked a little bit about Mountain Meadows Massacre uh -huh. and some other stuff like that. Well, it's my um, theory that Mormonism, Brighamite Mormonism. So anyone that came across with Brigham Young and all the breakoff groups that sort of come from that uh, are completely shaped by polygamy, the doctrine, theology. I, I often say the LDS Church is still a polygamous church. Um, if not in our hearts, you know, Brigham Young asked everyone to be a polygamist, if only in their hearts. And I think that people took that really seriously. And so for me, I can see traces of polygamy just about anywhere. You know, a lot of the things, the, the things that the modern LDS church have now, the practices, policies, doctrine, culture, was either grew out of polygamous culture or a response to polygamous culture or, um, a direct like reaction to trying to distance yourself from it and so to me it's polygamy is everywhere you know and I can and I can sort of trace the roots so yeah we talk a lot about the history but like Mountain Meadows Massacre and Mormon violence and all of that all of it is rooted in ideas that are traced back to polygamy in my opinion well, interesting 
So I know we've been trying to get together for a while. I'm, I'm glad we finally did. Um, if nothing, just to just boost my listenership. <laughs> That's right. Everybody listen. Turn it. <laughs> and you've had some great interviews. You've oh. had like some really solid yeah. stuff. This is so much fun, and I, I, I'd love to dip my toe in here. But one of the things is we, we talked at, in Kirtland, at Kirtland Sunstone, and <clears throat> I said, well, what, where should we go with this interview? And you said, well, why don't we go from about the 1890 Manifesto forward, which is really good because I I don't feel like I understand that really well. I mean, I've talked with, a little bit with that with Ann Wilde. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to kind of go, and maybe we should step back to maybe 1886 because that was... That was an important thing. So, so let's let's start out here with the 1886 John Taylor revelation. Tell us more about that, and we'll we'll try to move forward to the present. Well, can I can I give us like a? I'm going to try to be really concise, like yeah. a brief history of how we got to 1886, sure. and then yeah. because I think all of it's so important. And so, of course. Oh, and in fact, I have to tell you, I don't know if I should admit this. In one of your episodes, um, you had mentioned that John Taylor's last wife was oh wow do you remember i don't <laughs> it's probably so a I, i'm trying to remember if it was like but her last name was Ruche. you oh, said yeah. Ruche, and i i have some Ruche relatives oh. and in fact my uncle's great aunt was john taylor's last wife in fact so you said it Ruche on there and i'm like Oh my gosh, am I related to that somehow? Which I mean, I'm not really related. That's but, that's but been one of the funnest things on the podcast. Is I people talked hear to my cousin. Um, I, why can I not remember her name? But I talked to my cousin, and she says, "Well, Rouche was actually is a is a possible correct pronunciation, but it's pronounced Rouche now." Yeah. And so John Taylor actually died in Kaysville, and my relatives are from Kaysville. That's so fun. And no, so it's likely that I pronounced it wrong. Like, that's one thing that, one thing I've learned about myself. I pronounced so many, especially the fundamentalist words wrong when I first didn't know what I was talking about. And especially the Kingston episode, I will have a lot of members from the Kingston group. They're like, it's Washaki, not Washaki. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> it's, it's like you can tell a Gentile, no one's, someone who's never talked about Mormonism, if they call it like Nephi instead of Nephi. Right. And you're like, we know, you're not, you're not right. one of us right. if you say it that way. So, yeah, I, I probably pronounced it incorrectly. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Lindsay Hansen Park. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about John Taylor, the third president of the LDS Church. How do fundamentalists look at him? John Taylor, I always call him, I always say with fundamentalists, if there was like a action figure prophet, you know, like if you go to Desert Book, you can find like the, the weird action figures of Nephi. He's like a buff plastic figure and like no kid is playing with that, right? But fundamentalists would love a John Taylor action figure because he was just like running from the government, giving a middle finger to the government. He's like, we're never going to, plural marriage is never going to leave the earth and um, we're going to keep it alive. And he had hide, hideouts in the Gardo house, and all of some of the old homes still in Salt Lake have hiding places. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please support Gospel Tangents and become a subscriber. For just $5 a month, go to uh, patreon.com slash gospel tangents, and you can hear the entire interview. And you can also get uh, transcripts available in either our Amazon website, or if you want to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website at gospeltangents.com, and you can click the yellow subscribe button. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other places. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. And don't forget to click here to subscribe on YouTube here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again for listening.